So we're going to look at uh, some more techniques for optimizing the computation of these uh, query documents scores. The next technique we're going to look at is called cluster pruning. And the way this is done is as follows. You start from the end documents that you have in the corpus and you pick square root of n random documents out of these n. Okay, why square root of n? I'll just tell you. But, you know, let's... Uh, I just want to give you a high level picture of the overall uh, procedure and then we'll come back to why we are working with square root of n. These square root of n random documents that we choose are going to be called as leaders. Now, all the other documents other than these leaders are going to be assigned are, are going to fall into square root of n groups. So each leader is going to acquire a set of uh, followers. And the way a follower is assigned to a leader is by computing the cosine score between the other documents and these leaders. Okay, so if I'm a document who's not a leader, I'll compute what the cosine score between myself and all of these square root of n leaders is and pick the leader who is closest to me. Okay, if you're thinking about that uh, v-dimensional vector space again, we are trying to cluster documents into square root of n clusters based on nearest neighbor matching. So each document will pick the leader that is closest to it and uh, become its follower. Now, if this process is truly done randomly, then we expect that each leader will acquire about square root of n followers. Why is that? Because they are randomly chosen. Right? They are randomly chosen. So, what's going to happen is that uh, hopefully our leaders will be distributed randomly in the vector space and if there is a dense region in the vector space where there are many documents, we expect to find more than one leader chosen from that region. It's just like, you know, you have a large country like India, you have many states, and states with a greater population will tend to have more representatives. So, in the same way, regions of the vector space which have a higher density of documents will have more leaders emerging from that uh, region. Okay. Now how does query processing work? Remember that we want to cut down we want to cut down the um, Hello sir? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, does this like randomization like work in practice I mean is it really done in like practice like you select a ran generate a random number and uh, do it like that, like, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you pick a random number between 1 and n, and, you know, whatever number you pick that, you know, choose the document with that particular doc ID. Okay, you'll have to choose a random integer between 1 and n. And whatever integer you end up with, pick the document with that doc ID and make it a leader. So this is going to be done offline, okay? This is not being done for every query. This, these leaders are being computed for the index as a whole. So you'll be doing this just once. And then what I'm going to just describe to you, the process of answering a query is going to use this uh, assignment of leaders and followers for all the queries. So even if it's a little a little expensive to do this, you can, you just have to do it once. So, uh, I mean like, are they like uh, actual random, num uh, that random number function that is there and if we use that itself and I mean, is it really random or is it some logic? Or, I mean, that's what I'm asking. 
I mean, these are pseudo random generators. Obviously, it's very hard to truly come up with a random number. So, I mean, there are some good pseudo random generators which would uh, work well in practice. So, again, this these are heuristics. Okay, so it's possible that uh, you know your your leaders may not truly be random. In which case, this technique can fail. So, there's no guarantee that it's going to uh, you know give you some kind of an optimal uh, uh, scoring in terms of time. It's not. It may not minimize the actual time, and you can come up with examples which will not work very well with this technique. It's just a heuristic. So, how do you process a query in this system? Well, remember that the query itself can be mapped to that v-dimensional vector space. And once it's planted in that v-dimensional vector space, a query will simply find its nearest leader. Okay, so you calculate the distance between the query and all the leaders and choose the leader who is closest to the query. Now, the documents that you're going to examine will only be the documents in the follower list of that leader. So you're not going to examine all the end documents. You're only going to examine documents that have already been detected as being similar or close to that leader. Okay, and because the query itself is has been detected as being closest to this particular reader than to other leaders, you can hope that the query will be relatively close to the followers of that leader as well compared to other clusters okay so we are effectively detecting which cluster the query falls into and looking only at documents within that cluster and if this process is done reasonably randomly then each cluster will have approximately square root of n documents and so instead of looking at n documents you'll need to look only at uh, square root of n documents for uh, for uh, answering the query. So here's a visual depiction of that. Each uh, document is depicted as a dot here and you can see that there are five clusters formed. Okay, so there are five leaders chosen because how many documents are there? 25 documents. Okay, so n is 25 and so you choose square root of 25 which is, uh, oh sorry, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this one has six. This one has five. This one has five. This one has five. Approximately 25. So you choose uh, n equal to five, and then you choose five leaders from within this corpus. And those are marked as red here. And if you do this randomly, then hopefully you'll pick one leader from each, each of these uh, conceptual clusters. And then the other documents in that cluster will become followers of that leader. Now when the query comes, the query is shown in green here, the query is then mapped to one of the clusters, the cluster that is closest to it, or the leader who is closest to it. And then the query is compared to only documents within this cluster. Right, so if you generate a square root of n clusters, you can also imagine generating uh, generating indices which contain only documents within that cluster. Right, so think of, I mean, conceptually, you can think of there being several different Excuse indices, sir? one for each cluster. And Excuse then, me, sir. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just wanted to know how these clusters are exactly formed. Uh, the first step is to choose square root of n random numbers between 1 and n and then to choose the leaders. Do you understand how the leaders are chosen? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, you look at all the other documents. Uh, okay, let's focus on this particular document, for example. 
you'll compute the score between this document and all the leaders that you've chosen. And this computation is exactly like the one we did for uh, sense and sensibility, pride and prejudice, and Wuthering Heights. Right? You're comparing their uh, cosine scores. You're computing the angle between the two vectors by doing normalization and looking at their DF-IDF weights. And you will choose the leader who is closest to that document and make the document a follower of that leader. And you'll do this for every document in the corpus. And so you'll generate these clusters because the set of documents that are the followers of a particular leader form one single cluster. Okay. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Okay. So uh, there is a separate chapter on clustering later on. Uh, we we'll look at clustering techniques in more detail, provided we, you know, we come to it. So, why do you use random sampling? Well, choosing square root of n random numbers is relatively fast, and the leaders that are chosen will reflect the data distribution. Now, uh, actually, the first point is not just that the computation itself is fast, but even in 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 terms of um, In terms of choosing a set of documents that are most likely closer to the query, if you do random sampling, you'll hopefully achieve that. You'll be able to detect which cluster is actually closest to the query by this way. And it's, it's definitely fast and the leaders are going to reflect the data distribution. Okay, this is something I mentioned a few minutes ago. If you have a dense region, if your data is distributed such that there are these dense clusters formed in the your vector space, then you will expect to hit that cluster more than once when choosing your leaders. Because you're just choosing a random number between 1 and n. So if there's a dense region, you will expect to hit that region proportionately more, more number of times. And so that dense region will be carved up to a finer resolution using random sampling. Okay, whereas if you have a very low density region, a very coarse region, you will find a cluster being formed over a larger area. If you have a dense region, each cluster will take up a smaller area. In the diagram, I mean, not uh, from a visual perspective. Okay, so the leaders are going to reflect the data distribution and random sampling is uh, pretty much going to be fast because you just have to choose square root of n numbers. Now there are, th there's a slightly more complicated variant of this technique where y you won't have a single leader for a black document or, or for a follower document. Each of the black documents in that diagram will choose, could choose more than one leader. Okay, for example, it could choose three leaders. And likewise, when you map the query, you, you, you may map it to more than one leader. You could map it to four leaders, for example. And then look at the followers of all those four leaders. And again, because each follower can be attached to three leaders, if you do this, you'll probably be examining more number of documents, but you will hopefully be also increasing your recall. Okay, if you examine fewer number of documents that are very, very close to the query, okay, according to the basic scheme that I outlined earlier, your precision will be high because the documents you're examining have already, are already close to the query in some way. But your recall will be low because there could be other query, other documents not as close to the query in the v-dimensional space, which could still be relevant. If you do this, you will be uh, you will be capturing a larger set of documents, so your recall will be more, but your precision may be low because now you are looking at documents that are further away from the query. Okay, so this is a more complicated uh, mm -hmm. 
Uh, so could you please repeat this? But uh, it's not clear. Uh, what I was saying was in this diagram, each document is choosing exactly one leader, right? Yes, sir. In this in this more complicated variant, each document will choose more than I mean it will choose B1 leaders. If B1 is three here, so each document will choose three leaders. So this will choose. Uh, let's look at this document for example. This document, this one which we had marked. This is the this is one of the leaders it will choose because this is the closest leader to it. The second closest leader could be this one. The third closest leader could be this one. So this document will become a follower of all these three leaders. Every black will become a follower of all three nearest leaders. Likewise, when we try to map the query in this case, we will map it to B2 leaders, where B2 is more than one. Okay, for example, B2 could be chosen as four. So the query will map to four leaders, and then for those four leaders, we will look at all their followers. Combine all the followers of those four leaders together and focus on those subset of documents from the corpus. Uh, yes, I got it, sir. Okay. So you will be potentially looking at more documents now. You'll be looking at documents that were not as close to the query relative to the earlier scheme where you just had one leader, each document and the query mapped to exactly one leader. Here the query would have been mapped only to this cluster, but now the query could be mapped maybe to these, you know, these three clusters. And so you'll be examining more documents. For You'll be computing the score between the query and more documents. So your recall will be more because there could be some relevant documents in these two clusters, although it's more likely that the relevant documents will be clustered over here. But some of them could lie here, so your recall would be would increase. But your precision could go down because you're examining documents that are further away from the query. And that means the results, the, the, the list of documents you are examining will have a larger percentage of irrelevant documents. Actually, forget the comment about precision and recall if you didn't understand. Uh, just, uh, ju just keep in mind the fact that you're examining a larger set of documents here. So the cost is more, but you could potentially gather documents that were relevant but were not captured in this single cluster. Okay, as long as you get that, um, that's fine. 